morning everyone welcome to our channel good morning everyone welcome to our academy where you can crack all the pg exams with us with our top educators quality content and have a great learning experience so guys let's crack meet pg together a little about me i'm dr sasha menon remedies i have done my md in anesthesia from fadumulla medical college bangalore I have two publications and one paper presentation in the field of anesthesia, and I have been working and teaching in Bangalore for the past two and a half years. Uh, today's uh, class will be airway devices. We we'll take it in two or three parts depending on which we cover today. So, guys, uh, let's crack uh, NEET PG. It's with the one of India's largest online learning platform, where you can get plus subscription and access to unlimited live and recorded courses from India's best educators. So, what will you get out of An Academy? So, at An Academy, we basically have our, uh, daily live classes where you can chat with your educator, engage in discussions, clear your doubts, and answer questions. This is while the classes. So basically, when you go to a coaching institute, uh, now once you reach a coaching institute, it's very uh, you have to get ready, get up, get dressed, reach there. Then once you reach there again, it's a whole it's a whole different ball game, right? You have to be able to get the good place. You have to get the educator's attention. The educator has to have enough time to clear your doubts, and it's kind of like almost like a vicious cycle, right? Because the educator also has a stipulated amount of time. The educator can doubts so it becomes a little difficult overall uh, but over here you can chat with your educator during the class clear your ask your doubts and and uh, there are answer polls during quizzes etc so during all this is while the class is going on so your educator will either clear your doubts during the class or at the end of class now these are all structured courses and they are all in line with your exam syllabus and they help you best prepare for it then we have our live tests and quizzes so they help you evaluate uh, your preparation on a regular basis so once we complete a couple of topics we can quiz and this will help you all to evaluate your preparation on a basis and of course we have um, uh, we have uh, it's a one subscription which can get you access to all our live courses and you can watch from the comfort of your home so wherever you are uh, we all are situated from the comfort of uh, any of your devices you all can uh, from you know whichever part of wherever you all are comfortable you all can watch these are some of our top educators dr nikita Mani, dr mohammed azam dr devish mishra dr sharma Dr. Nikita Nanwani is a neat PG mentor for radiology as well as mnemonics and concept focusing on must know topics which encompass all subjects. So mnemonics is a very important part and if it helps you all, it is brilliant. Making your own mnemonics is even better. For me personally, mnemonics never help, but each one is different. Don't go by that. But if it helps you all, making your own mnemonics is really good. Two, as you remember, these are some of our courses offered. As you can see on the screen, there are so many subjects that you all need to cover, and after various subjects, there are courses. I know this exam is not easy, and we are here to help you all make this exam easy. Now, as you can see on your screen, uh, courses like dermatology, anesthesia, psychiatry, radiology. Well, come on guys, you know, these courses are a little, uh, you all never had to go into detail. These are all specialty courses, huge subjects, but you all never really had to go into detail into these subjects, right? So it was okay during MBBS, but over here, you all need to go into some detail. I'm not saying full detail, but you'll have to go into some detail to be able to answer the ex the questions that are given to you that are uh, put forth to you during need PG. So it, you'll, you'll need to have some knowledge, otherwise it will be difficult, right? So some knowledge has to be there from uh, these 
subjects so that is why these courses are conducted they are structured courses whatever is best for you all is being portrayed to you all and uh, like i said uh, these subjects have about 11 marks each scoring wise and uh, they are highly scoring subjects now why are they scoring is because uh, subjects um, uh, like during MBBS they did not you all didn't have to go into depth even now you don't really they will not the examiner will not go into that much of depth because uh, these are basically uh, for you all to just know these are not in-depth subjects you all don't need to know the subjects in depth uh, from me PG point of view but you'll have to study them in depth means they are not why you don't need to know them is because it's only 11 marks and uh, they put forth questions to you which are more you know if you know the basics of the subject you will be able to answer the basics are not easy but it's not superficial basics like during yes in these subjects i mean whereas your anatomy physiology pharmacology have 44 marks allotted so that's a huge coverage that you all have to do right because they can ask you anything from anywhere with regards to those subjects these are some of the ongoing courses on our platform uh, course on neurophysiology gi surgery cardiovascular thoracic surgery pathology respiratory system course on larynx these are the various courses on our now coming to the subscription as you can see on the screen there are five types of subscriptions and uh, those of you who are giving neat pg this year I think the six month subscription should uh, suffice for you all. Uh, but otherwise, the 12 and the 24 month subscriptions are really good. Um, so, there's no harm in dropping a year. Nobody is going to ask you all how long you all took to clear any PG. So, it is good. There is no problem with that. And so, nobody will ask you all such questions. And of course, it gives you all time to know how long and what. Uh, it gives you all time to decide on the subjects that you'll actually enjoy. Because when you're going through these subjects, you'll actually know what you like and dislike. Because after all, you will be studying these subjects too, not only working in these subjects for the rest of your life. So you'll need to enjoy what you'll are going to take up as a practice, right? So use my code at the bottom of the screen. As you can see, SASHA to avail your 10% discount. So the, for the 12 and 24, as you can see, these are the 10%. Of course, the, the discount applies to all these, uh, all the subscriptions. Now we'll come to today's topic, airway devices. Uh, the supraglottic airway devices, basically, supraglottic airway devices, they lie above the laryngeal inlet. Infraglottic airway devices lie below the laryngeal inlet in the trachea. So, uh, for a field intubation in adults, so this is basically for uh, uh, difficult airway. This is also known as the difficult airway strategy. So, plan A was the initial tracheal intubation plan. So, the maximum of two attempts is in two minutes. Uh, Reoxygenate if the saturation falls between below 90% uh, with the two person bag mask ventilation or uh, oropharyngeal airway or a nasopharyngeal airway. Call, anest call anesthetics if plan A fails. If plan A fails, so you do a direct laryngoscopy, you fail, try it twice. If the saturation does not pick up in, uh, if the saturation falls, so first of all, after two attempts, call for help. If um, the saturation has fallen, reoxygenate the patient. Uh, do the two person bag mask ventilation if uh, uh, it's difficult to hold the bag and mask. Put a put an airway, either a oropharyngeal or a nasopharyngeal airway. Call uh, and uh, call help call for help basically. 
so the uh, rapid sequence intubation pre intubation checklist pre oxygenator so pre oxygenate the patient position the ear to sternal on uh, notch uh, basically position it in uh, neck extension and uh, neck extension should be performed and Section at the atlanto occipital joint and extension of the neck. Uh, ramp would be placed if uh, the pillows a ramp should be made if the patient is obese. This is all to bring the pharyngeal uh, inlet in line with the oral cavity. Paralysis and sedation for all. Uh, quick oil pressure for the all initially, but if the view is poor, release slowly. Then little laryngeal manipulation so that the cords can be seen. And uh, if the cords can be seen, a Gucci can be used. I will teach on all this. So this is the. We'll come back to the strategy post teaching you all all the uh, airway devices so that you all will know what we are talking about. Okay. So for now, we'll just follow this, and then we'll come back to this towards the end of our classes. Not this class, but towards the end of all the classes. If you succeed, tracheal intubation has to be verified with ETCO2. Otherwise, go to plan B, that is secondary tracheal intubation plan. Maximum two attempts by a different person in two minutes. Reoxygenate if the saturation falls below 90%. With the two percent back mask ventilation, oropharyngeal airway or nasopharyngeal airway. Do a video laryngoscopy as a difficult airway. Maximize laryngeal view by uh, avoiding cricoid pressure. And minimize and by using external laryngeal uh, manipulation if you succeed tracheal intubation if you succeed in tracheal intubation verify with etco2 if video laryngoscopy also fails maintain oxygen basically bag mask uh, ventilation and uh, etc and uh, see that oxygenation is maintained insert an L lma no preferred pressure during a laryngeal mask okay? this is a supra block device uh, then uh, either a fiber optic uh, if oxygenation improves with lma you can plan for a fiber optic intubation otherwise uh, the rescue technique is if you cannot intubate and cannot ventilate the patient picothyroid means. So difficult airway society guidelines overview. So plan A, face mask ventilation and tracheal intubation. Laryngoscopy, if you succeed in tracheal intubation, good. If it is failed, maintain oxidation uh, and supraglottic airway device insertion. If you succeed, stop and think. Consider all options like waking up the patient, intubate trachea through the supraglottic airway device. Proceed without intubating the trachea or tracheostomy and tracheothyroid. Either you can wake the patient up and stop the surgery, or you can intubate the trachea with the supraglottic airway device, or you can proceed without intubating the trachea or lower tracheostomy or tracheothyroid autumn. If supraglottic airway device fails, face mask uh, ventilation, final attempt, either try to wake up the patient. If you uh, cannot wake up the patient, if the patient is desaturated, then emergency front of neck tricothyroidotomy is done. So now coming to the airway devices. So supraglottic airway devices that facilitate the oxygenation and ventilation without endotracheal activation. So they are devices. So these are devices that facilitate oxygenation and ventilation. So you don't have to intubate the trachea in these patients, right? So they are a bridge between bag mask ventilation and uh, endotracheal intubation. So they are useful in cannot intubate, very useful in cannot intubate, cannot ventilate situations. So. Uh, 
So basically, heavy devices that can facilitate uh, oxygenation and ventilation without vitreal intubation. So between bag, between the mask. And the endotracheal tube, this forms a bridge which is known as a laryngeal mask airway or the supraglottic airway. So, surgical airway, failed intubation. In between your failed intubation and doing a surgical airway, the bridging is the supraglottic airway device. So, Dr. Archie Brain. Dr. Archie Brain introduced this, uh, he was the founder in, of the invention and development of laryngeal mask airway devices in uh, 1982. 1982 at Royal London Hospital and uh, this was a modification of Modification of Goldman Dental Mark. So these are the various uh, airway devices. Uh, laryngeal mask airway, combi tube. Laryngeal mask airway in 1988, combi tube in 1988. The classic laryngeal mask airway in 1988. Fast track in 95, proceed in 2000. Uh, laryngeal tube in 2003, AQ in 2004, IGEL in 2007, LMA Supreme in 2007, Basca Mask in 2000. The supraglottic airway devices evolution. First generation devices, they are simple airway tubes which include the classic LMA, Fleximal LMA, and Cobra Proceed LMA. 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 Then uh, the second generation are your which so these elements in the second generation include drainage tube, proceal, eye gel, LMA supreme, and sleep up. Okay. Then third generation, uh, they are cuffless, uh, they have two drain tubes, small bowel, small bowl, and so the Basca master that was discovered in 2012. Cuffless, no cuff, two drain tubes, and a small bowl. So, supraglottic uh, airway device. So, basically, it is a device that is used for anesthesia and maintaining patency of the upper airway. It, uh, so, just a small description on the device. Used to maintain from its positive pressure ventilation. It consists of an it consists of an elliptical silicone mask with an infl inflatable outer rim, a pilot tube, and a balloon. Okay. So when we come to that, we'll describe it in further in detail. Uh, yeah. So now coming to the man. So let me fast track. Just a second. So these are the various types of uh, LMAs as you can see here. So classic, flexible, LMA supreme, proceed, LMA fast track. So, firstly, what are the, uh, when you compare an LMA to a face mask. So, comparison to the face mask with the LMA, the advantages are.
it provides most secure and reliable means of ventilation than the face mask so it is more secure means of ventilation uh, you do not need to the mandible does not need to be supported as a result of so the hands of the it's it's a hands free procedure so with the face mask the anesthesiologist has to hold the patient's mandible etc but over here it is a hand hand free procedure it can be easily inserted by a non clinical staff too so it is easy insertion Uh, can be used in patients with abnormal facial contour, uh, low risk. So with the LMA, the, the risk of aspiration is lower because to some extent the esophagus is uh, covered. It, uh, of course, it does not, uh, it does not ensure absolute protection, but more protection than the face mask. And uh, however, there is more post-operative. Uh, so throat seen with LMA. Now your LMA and tracheal tube. The complication is your post operative. So throat. Now your LMA versus. So LMA versus ET tube, uh, there is a reduced uh, stress response compared to laryngoscopy with LMA. So with laryngoscopy, when the uh, when the scope is put within the into the pharynx, a uh, lot of uh, you know there's a lot of vagal stimulus and sympathetic stimulation and all that. But with the LMA. There is no st such stimulation. There is a minimum increase in intraocular pressure following insertion. There is a reduced requirements for anesthetic agents for airway tolerance as compared to with the endotracheal tube. Neuromuscular blockers are not needed. The patient can be kept on spontaneous ventilation with these uh, supraglottic airway devices. Uh, can be easily inserted by a clinical or non-clinical staff. This is mainly during cardiopulmonary resuscitation because it is an emergency and low incidence of uh, post-operative sore throat as compared to endotracheal tube. Um, it can be easily inserted in patients with cervical spine abnormalities where, you know, mobilization has to be limited, like right? cervical spine surgeries and all, immobilization has to be uh, limited. Uh, so insertion of LMA does not require laryngoscopy. It uh, provides effective uh, ventilation, uh, which is almost similar to the endotracheal tube. Uh, the disadvantages, however, are the disadvantages with this LMA are it does not ensure absolute protection against aspiration. So the problem is aspiration. So with the ET tube, aspiration is better prevented. Then we have, uh, it is contraindicated uh, in patients at risk of acid aspiration. So it is contraindicated in patients with the uh, risk of acid aspiration and uh, it, the a lower seal pressure. So it forms a lower seal pressure. Yeah. So, if ventilated with high pressures, it can lead to distension of the stomach and that can predispose to regurgitation of gas. Right? So, your classic LMA. So, first of all, as you can see, it has an...
so now coming to so it this is the elliptical silicon mask it consists of an elliptical silicon mask with an inflatable so this outer rim is inflatable so with an inflatable outer rim a pilot balloon this is the pilot balloon and uh, a latex free silicon tube a standard this is the 15 mm male connector airway tube pilot balloon uh, consists of an elliptical silicon mask with inflatable this outer rim is inflatable pilot balloon latex free this is the latex free silicon tube okay so the elliptical cuff this elliptical cuff has bars on the uh, so this is the laryngeal inlet this part is a Let so it has bars over here known as the aperture bar. The LMA can be used for 40 uses. Autoclave. This is for all LMAs. Okay. Autoclave sterilization. Now, what is the preparation that is generally required prior to insertion? So, first examine the surface of the LMA for damage, including any cuts, tears, or scratches. Then examine the 15 mm connector to ensure that it is, uh, you know, that it fits uh, tightly into the airway tube. Uh, do not twist the connector as it may break. So, the connector should fit tightly then uh, into the airway tube then uh, so examine the airway then the cuff has to be checked so the a syringe with about 4 ml of air into the pilot balloon is uh, so first the pilot balloon has to be deflated completely so that the cuff is flattened the cuff should be flattened against each other the two walls then the cuff wall should be examined whether they are tightly, uh, whether they are flattened against each other. Then the cuff has to be over inflated with air through the pilot balloon. And it should form a, it should not deflate, it should form a, a complete vacuum. And then if you look for leaks, prior to insertion, the cuff should be deflated tightly. Deflate the cuff tight, uh, tightly so that it forms a spoon shape. So, so it should be, the cuff should be deflated prior to insertion this may be accompanied by pressing the aperture down onto a flat surface so the lma can be pressed the laryngeal inlet can be pressed down onto a flat surface alternately cuff deflator devices can be used to check the adequate deflation of the cuff then uh, lubricate the lma should be lubricated on the posterior surface with the lubricant jelly like ligno pain jelly prior to insertion the patient's neck should be flexed So as you can see, neck flexed and it extended. The patient's neck should be flexed and it extended. After all the necessary preparations, once the patient is anesthetized, the LMA tube should be grasped, uh, holding it like a pen as near as possible to the mask so it should be grass holding like a pen so you have to hold it like a pen so as you can see the finger has to go over here this picture you can see this is the tube so between the silicone tube and the cuff the finger has to be placed so it's placed like that and held like a pen so between the silicone tube see here between the tube and the cuff so the cuff will lie over the finger and the tube will lie below the finger right uh, so the lma the tip of the lma should be placed against the inner surface of the patient's upper teeth so it is uh, pressed against the hard palate uh, 
then push it into the oral cavity directed towards the heart palate the entire time using the index finger the index finger is always kept between the two uh, the LMA is glided along the heart palate into the pharynx ensure that the tip is flattened and avoids the tongue so it has to be pressed against the heart palate the entire time and the index finger is always kept there and it is pushed in so you can use the other hand to push the LMA inside advance the mask into the pharynx with the dominant hand index finger until it cannot advance any further you will find a resistance then with the non dominant hand so after you push it in hold the tube and hold the tube with this hand and then only take out this hand otherwise if you just pull out your hand the lma might get displaced so the tube should be held with the, the non dominant hand and then the dominant uh, the withdraw the dominant hand can be withdrawn uh, then gently push push the LMA further once you take out your finger to ensure that the mask is fully inserted then you have to inflate with the uh, appropriate uh, according to the size of the LMA that amount of air has to be inflated. So the LMA lies slightly out of the hypopharynx as you can see here it lies these are your vocal cords it lies slightly this is your epiglottis your vocal cords it's sitting on the vocal cords so it lies slightly outside your hypopharynx so when appropriately positioned the distal tip of the silicon cuff sets against the upper so this the distal tip should be against the upper should be against the upper esophageal sphincter and the sides of the cuff in the pyriform fossa the upper part at the tongue base and the sides should be in the sorry the sides should be in the pyriform The classic LMA. Advantages are uh, there's increased speed and ease of placement, improved hemodynamic stability, it reduces anesthetic requirements, less coughing and sore throat and can be done by an inexperienced personnel during cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Right? Your disadvantages are it is a low pressure seal, there is increased risk of gastric aspiration, suction is not possible as there is no suction port. The tip may get folded while inserting and cause obstruction. It might fold over the vocal cords and cause obstruction and it might form an inadequate seal. So positive, if the seal is not adequate, there will be a lot of leak and the ventilation will be inadequate. So the normal, the seal pressure of classic unique, uh, the seal pressure of the classic LMA, classic, so after it's placed on the laryngeal inlet, the cuff has to be inflated, right? So the seal pressure for your classic LMA is 20 centimeter okay so 20 ml of air can be that is your seal pressure 
uh, no the same pressure is 20 centimeter of water your classic uh, the unique and flexible lma also have the similar seal pressure your pro seal lma the seal pressure is 30 centimeter the pressure 30 centimeter water so the pro seal lma was uh, was specially designed for use uh, during positive pressure ventilation at high pressures okay, so it was uh, specifically designed for positive vent pressure ventilation that is uh, for uh, ventilation mechanical ventilation the uses indications contraindications limitations are similar to classic lma so basically what are the uh, indications and contraindications the indications for an lma use are the lma be, may be used as an alternative to airway during general anesthesia and in elective surgical cases uh, it can be an essential part of the difficult airway trolley because it is part of the difficult airway or algorithm uh, during cardiopulmonary resuscitation because when the airway cannot be secured quickly then uh, it is a relative indication apparently in professional singers to avoid complications of endotracheal tube intubation because so professional singers cannot so throat and all can disrupt their career now contraindications to LMA use any patient at the risk of aspiration as they do not prevent aspiration to a good extent. Patients with major major local any local pathology in the pharynx and the larynx like any tumor, abscess, hematoma as it can disrupt these. Then uh, patients with trismus or facial uh, or upper airway trauma because it will be difficult to insert and can cause more damage and bleeding. Then patients who are morbidly obese more than uh, 14 weeks pregnant. So pregnant patients are considered full stomach. So the risk of aspiration is very high. Uh, patients who have received opioid medications or conditions associated with any gastric delay. Basically the main concern is it does not give a good gastric seal pressure. So the risk of aspiration is very high. Then patients with reduced lung compliance has increased the work of breathing. Uh, especially in pulmonary fibrosis, asthmatics, and also these uh, LMAs form a low pressure seal around the laryngeal inlet. And ventilating the patients with these conditions may require high pressures, and hence the ventilation may be inadequate. And uh, also, gastric insufflation may occur uh, as ventilation is delivered at high pressure, right? So, gastric uh, because there is so much of leak, there can be high chance of gastric insufflation because it has a very low cuff sealing pressure of only 20 to 30 30 is still okay but the 20 centimeter uh, water cuff seal pressure like your classic lma supreme lma etc uh, sorry classic lma unique lma fast track so because uh, they have very low sealing pressure the chance of gastric insufflation is very high now what were the modifications of the pro seal lma over the uh, so the only the different features of the proceed LMA were the elliptical cuff of the proceed LMA extends to the posterior or the pharyngeal side of the posterior LMA, thus improving the so the elliptical cuff. So this elliptical cuff it extends to the posterior. It slightly bends back, right? Improving the pressure seal. Then the mask has two tubes attached to it. So two tubes one is a drain tube so this is your drain tube see this is a drain tube 15 mm connector it has a bite block too so usually we have to make a make a bite block input so that the patient does not bite the block this is an airway tube with the uh, metal rings to prevent uh, metallic uh, metal rings to prevent kinking this is the cuff this is the internal drain tube drain orifice inflation balloon manual vent so now the difference is like they said it has a internal drain tube so the cuff is bent slightly backwards dorsally 
it has a drain tube and a reinforced airway tube and a built-in bite block so it has a bite block the airway tube is reinforced reinforced in the sense it has those metallic ring, rings so it prevents uh, thinking uh, so the drain tube is incorporated within the cuff too it communicates with the upper esophageal sphincter so this communicates with the upper esophageal sphincter permits drainage of the gastric contents uh, and insertion of gastric tube the position of the drain tube so a gastric tube can be a smaller gastric tube can be passed into this into the stomach and the stomach can be suctioned the position of the drain tube inside the cuff is designed in such a way so it's designed in such a way that it prevents the epiglottis from uh, occluding the airway tube okay so thus there are no aperture bars So it does not have aperture bars because this drain tube the aperture bars are basically to prevent the epiglottis from falling over the cuff and including the cuff and uh, basically preventing ventilation so here there are this aperture bars are not needed because this drain tube serves a purpose so the reinforced airway tube like i said prevents kinking the built-in bite block reduces the possibility of airway obstruction so the patient will not bite this so there will be no airway obstruction So the mask has a strap. Okay. So this uh, proceal LMA first can also be inserted uh, using a uh, by uh, can be inserted by inserting a bougie in the drain tube and passing the bougie in the esophagus after gently pharyngoscopy. The so through the drain tube the bougie can be passed into the Esophagus bougie is a long tube. Uh, after gentle pharyngoscopy, bougie passed into the es pharyng uh, uh, esophagus. The uh, uh, proceal LMA is then guided over the bougie in place. Since the bougie is already in the esophagus, the proceal LMA will automatically sit in front of the laryngeal index. So this can also be done where a bougie. So bougie is a long. It's, it's just a long thin uh, tube like this. Just thin like this, and it's long. Yeah. around 40 centimeters which is around 40 centimeters in length so it can be passed through this gastric tube into the esophagus so gently pharyngoscopy done once the bougie is in the esophagus then uh, so LMA can be passed into the guided over the bougie so like i said it has a bite block the uh, larger bowl and dorsal extensions of the cuff gastric and drainage tube running parallel to every large and deep hole with no there is no uh, uh, no uh, aperture bars now according to sizing 1.5 can be used for a 5 to 10 kg uh, weight people a children 2 can be used for 10 to 20 2.5 from 20 to 30 uh, 3 from 30 to 50, 4 from 50 to 70 and 5 from 70 to 100, right? So for 4 and 5, the fiber optic uh, scope can be passed through it. These are the size of the gastric tubes. So 14 French is used for 2.5, 16 French is used for 3 and 4. Uh, length of the drain tube uh, as shown. And uh, so size 4 is generally used for men. Size 3 for women. So, this is the largest tracheal tube. 4 is uncuffed. And 5 is all up. 6 is cuffed. So, basically, through the laryngeal, through the proceal LMA. It basically indicates these sizes of tubes can also fit into the uh, laryngeal inlet, right? So all uncuffed and only with the size 5 or 6 cuffed might be able to fit.
So, so the distal tip will close the esophageal aperture. The sides sit in the pyriform fossa and the tip is at the base of the tongue. So the drainage tube will be in contact with the esophagus. This drainage tube tip will be in contact with the esophagus and it prevents the also prevents the epiglottis from falling over the cuff, the drainage tube. So through the drainage, this is the drainage, the drainage tube. Uh, suction catheter can be passed into the esophagus and then into the stomach. Now, classic LMA versus Rosil LMA. Uh, advantages are there is a separate gastric tube port for gastric access, checking correct positioning. Bougie guided insertion of ET tube is possible. So, once the Procyl LMA is in place, uh, even once the Procyl LMA is in place, a bougie can be passed uh, through the gastric tube into the esophagus. And uh, then uh, uh, an endotracheal tube can be passed. So the dorsal cuff provides a better seal and higher sealing, higher better seal and higher sealing pressures. Okay. Then uh, with drain tube occluded, less incidence of gastric uh, there's less incidence of gastric aspiration by block is also used and it can be used for both spontaneous as well as controlled ventilation Okay, disadvantages of the Procyl uh, LMA, uh, there is more incidence of trauma, equivocal incidence of sore throat as compared to uh, classic LMA, slightly longer insertion time compared to the classic LMA, 20% more airway resistance than classic airway in spontaneously breathing patients and less, it is less suitable as an intubation device requires a greater depth of anesthesia for insertion. Now coming to your LMA Supreme. So as you can see, uh, it is a latest latex free single use LMA. It is very, it is latex free, very similar to the Procyl uh, LMA. The tube part is, so the Tube part is rigid pre-shaped to, so this is, uh, it's already pre-shaped to adopt the, so it has a unique, unique elliptical rigid airway tube to, so it adopts the shape of the airway cavity. It has also a fixation tube for securing the LMA after, so this is the fixation tab for securing the LMA after insertion uh, and a built-in bite block and two ports, the airway port and the drain port. So this is the airway port drain port so it has a built-in white block to airway port drain port fixation tab p-shaped elliptical rigid airway tube to, which fits the contour of the airway the cuff has fins which prevent epiglottis from so the cuff has molded fins which prevent the epiglottis uh, from obstructing the airway lumen the tip of the cuff is reinforced to prevent it from folding during insertion so it has a reinforced uh, unmolded distal cuff to prevent the folding during insertion the patients can be ventilated with pressures up to 37 centimeter water so the ceiling pressure is up to 37 centimeter of water insertion of course almost LMA's insertion is very similar to the normal classic LMA insertion uh, with the introducer except no here there so with the Procyl LMA, introducer might be required. Here there is no introducer. The tip has an opening for the gastric tube. So over here there is an opening for the gastric tube. Intubation is not possible. It is available in both adult and pediatric sizes. Okay. 
so it has a modified cuff it is reinforced so that it does not prevent it prevents folding while insertion it has a electrical rigid area which fits the contour of the mouth it has a bite block it has a fixation tab which helps in easy fixing after once inserted it has a drain tube and a airway tube so and the drain tube opens at the tip of at the east of agus this uh, drain tube orifice sits on the east of agus it has a pilot balloon and it has molded fins over here to prevent the epiglottis from falling falling over the uh, aperture so the modifications of lma supreme so fixation tab uh, it facilitates easy insertion and fixation so this is the fixation tab here so it uh, easy insertion and fixation of the lma uh, visual guide to correct size select after inflation of the cuff the the fixation tab should be 1.52 cm from the upper lip so once uh, so that indicates that the size is correct if the distance is less the size chosen may be too small if the distance is more than 3 cm from the upper lip the size chosen may be too large so it has to be 1.52 cm from the upper lip after cuff inflation then the airway tube it is flattened firm anatomically shaped airway tube elliptical in cross section this elliptical shape facilitates insertion in patients with reduced interdental space without increasing the resistance to breathing so this helps in patients with reduced stuff uh, pharyngeal space uh, it is anatomically shaped and facilitates easy insertion without placing fingers in the mouth there is no need to place fingers in the mouth and it helps to minimize accidental rotation once in place so once it is in place it helps to minimize accidental rotation and lateral grooves on either side prevent pinking So there are grooves on either side which prevent thinking. The drainage tube it runs from the proximal end, uh, so from the proximal end to the middle of the airway tube and continues along the posterior surface of the cuff. It equalizes the pressure between uses between the atmosphere and the use. It vents uh, gastrointestinal gases and fluids. It serves as a conduit for passage of the nasogastric tube and indicator of correct tube positioning. The cuff, it is modified and enlarged inflatable cuff, enhances the, it fits the anatomical fit of the pharynx. Rotic seal pressure between, uh, it has similar to between the classic and pro seal enemy. Uh, the distal, the, it has a molded reinforced distal cuff. It strengthens the tip and prevents it from folding during insertion. So that's the main modification of the cuff. It is, re, it is a molded uh, distal reinforced cuff which prevents uh, folding during insertion and uh, there are modified fins at the back which prevent epiglottis from becoming wedged in the airway. So this was basic on the LMA and uh, Proceal and we have done with the Supreme Proceal and Classic LMA in brief. So that. Uh, I will take the remaining of the class tomorrow. Mostly we will divide this class into three parts as it is it is quite interesting and the various modifications have to be kept in mind. So I will revise side by side and discuss further tomorrow more on this topic. So then we have the LMA fast track. So as you can see, a 15 mm connector. Airway tube, a shaft, a handle, 15 mm connector. Fast track, an ET tube can be inserted to this LMA fast track and this is epiglottic elevating bar. So LMA's fast track, it, ha it is an intubating laryngeal mask airway. So the fast track is an intubating laryngeal mask airway. It is used to facilitate tracheal intubation. Can also be used as a primary airway device. So along with tracheal intubation, if not, if you don't want to intubate trachea, can be used as a primary airway device. It is a rescue device for failed intubation because first you can insert the LMA and then once LMA is placed, ventilation is uh, achieved. You can insert the ED tube and it is used for blind or fiber optic fibroscopic guided insertion.
disadvantages are pharyngeal pathology or limited mouth opening it is difficult to insert cannot be used for intubations below 30 kg cannot be used in pediatrics expensive and long use is to be avoided cannot be kept for a entire surgery the tracheal tube may be displaced downwards or dislodged it is unsuitable cannot be used in mri it is not mri cap uh, mri compatible and there is increased incidence of sore throat and difficult swallowing and esophageal intubation chances are there okay guys so that's about it tomorrow we will deal with lma unique and go forward so for today's class that's about it do use my code sasha to subscribe and avail a 10 percent discount guys hurry i will see you all tomorrow morning and we shall discuss more about this we'll go into fast track in detail tomorrow too i'm a little short on time today uh, but we shall go into much more detail tomorrow okay thank you guys have a good day